And hi guys, this is Natasha, aka Natty Willie from the Nerd Element, and I'm here at C2E2 with Christina Barr from Ninja Dust Publishing, and she has a new book out, Phases of a Broken Sky. Can you tell us about that? Uh, Phases of a Broken Sky is about a girl named Jessie who has very overprotective parents, and she's decided that she has to leave to go away to college because if she doesn't, then she'll never have a normal life where she can kind of cook on her own just because she's been so sheltered by them her entire life and she can't really blame them she can't really blame them because um, her brother died when she was younger and so she knows that they don't want to lose another child but she ends up leaving and going across the country and on her way she meets this um, guy who gets stuck on the side of the road and then uh, she gets she gets stuck on the side of the road and he helps her and so she feels compelled to return the favor and she also feels a strange kind of drawing to him his name is Maxwell and they're actually headed both out west which is strange and so the, the more they get to know each other the more they find out that they actually have something in their past that ties them both together. Mm -hmm. and Maxwell um, also has two pretty um, quirky, one's kind of quirky, the other's um, really kind of strange. Um, he has taphophobia, which is a fear of touching people. Which Interesting. He, which he finds out the hard way. <laughs> oh, okay. And he is also transitioning into a werewolf. So he's okay. got it bad. And so um, it's a dark romantic book, but it's also very, 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 very humorous. Um, Jessie is kind of the person who sees one thing and she takes it from like two to ten in the worst possible case scenario. Um, so it's she's very funny. They have a, a quirky, odd chemistry. Um, and she ends up, she really doesn't want to get drawn into the mess of the werewolves, but um, she's very curious about the past and what Maxwell can um, unlock for her. And so she ends up getting dragged into um, his vendetta because he, the only way to stop him from transitioning to a full werewolf is to kill his sire who happens to be his ex-best friend. Lovely. You, you realize you just spoiled the whole book, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't because you don't know who's successful. Or but you started out with the mystery and now I know what the mystery is as far as like the guy turning and having, <laughs> having issues turning into a werewolf. Um, it seemed like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to talk about it. <laughs> but it sounds pretty good. I mean, how much uh, research, how many werewolf like movies or lore did you like, research for the book? You know, my mom doesn't like movies unless people are dying and getting killed. Um, okay, really? Yeah, so... Yeah, explosions, actions. Um, so I've been watching sci-fi and horror films um, literally since Out of the Womb. Um, so I don't know. There's a ton, a ton of stuff. Um, and I'm also also a huge fan of the show Supernatural. Um, a lot of their their transitioning phase is kind of like like a similar to what the werewolves on that show is like. But uh -huh. um, at the end. Um, like I don't want to say at the end, but when, when you do transform into a full werewolf, it's kind of like classic, you know, like it. Okay, cool. So, um, you have other books as well. Can you tell us a little bit about some of your other books? Now, you mostly uh, write fantasy, correct? Uh, fantasy, contemporary fantasy. Uh, yeah, sci-fi ideas haven't quite got there yet. Um, but pretty much, yeah, everything's like contemporary fantasy. Um, Colored God's Eyes is historical fantasy. Uh, that's about a slave who actually uh, escapes slavery because she finds that she, out that she has the power to teleport. And um, as a quick blurb, uh, Sunrise Sunset is about a girl who has two souls trapped in her body. One is good and merged with Sunrise and Roxy. She can bring out the best in humanity and Lila can actually free people of their inhibitions. So she frees you, you know, that person you don't want to say nothing to because you're a good person when they cross you, but if you're free, you're just probably going to light them on fire. Like, maybe literally. Um, I don't know. It depends what kind of person you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
um, it seems like, at least for some of your books, you feature um, a diverse um, amount of characters, especially for The Color of God's Eyes. Now, how important is it to include, you know, like, African American or just any cultural characters in your novels? Um, it's, it's very important to me. Um, I mean, growing up, there's some, you watch TV, you don't always feel your, you see yourself represented. Mm -hmm. The first book I wrote, Super Kid, um, the main character is um, is mixed, he's Hispanic and Caucasian, and then, um, then his friends are, are black and, and Chinese, and I, I, I wanted a, a, divide, a diverse group of kids um, so someone can read it and, and identify with them. Um, the light book, um, that's kind of like an alternate type earth book, but um, everybody in the cast is very diverse from all around the world. Um, the color of God's eyes, I mean, it's a... It, I, I love the character Charlotte in there. She's so incredibly strong. It was important to me um, to, to write her that way and, and just the strength that she has to endure from her time in captivity when she does when she's out of it. And um, I think it's important to, to to make characters that are diverse. I don't necessarily like when other authors or um, writers or uh, Hollywood just tries to diverse people after the fact. Uh -huh. um, I know there's a big controversy with um, uh, J.K. Rowling with the stage play with Harry Potter. Yep. And um, people are arguing on Twitter crazy about Hermione. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I just don't personally care too much, but um, to me, if J.K. Rowling wants to make an iconic black character, all she has to do is write it on paper. Uh, like Star Wars new character Finn. Yeah. He was my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. And they didn't have to make Han Solo black to get a black character. They just made a new black character and that was iconic. So I think it's important to, to make characters. Now, speaking of Star Wars, how many times have you seen the movie? You know, I just saw it the one time. Oh, oh boo. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just saw the new Star Wars the one time. Um, my, my family's mostly Trekkies. I do like Star Trek, too. Um, I believe it's possible to like them equally, and I, and I guess they just kind of wanted to see it the one time. I, I don't get to the movies too much. Um, I Because you're writing. You're, you're busy writing. writing. Okay, that, that, that's how it is. All right, so you also keep it in the family. So here's your sister. What's her name? Tina. Tina. And the artwork that you see in the background, that's uh, Tina's work there. Yes, yeah, she does um, text portraits um, where she will actually draw a picture um, and she'll do it with the character's name. Like the TARDIS is no TARDIS. Uh -huh. um, Jensen Ackles, Jensen Ackles, um, Barack Obama, Taylor Lautner, Daryl is fantastic. Harry Potter on the side says the boy who lives. Oh, okay. And then um, these are her oil paintings as well. They're very fantastic. Uh, of course, Tina's, Google Tina's text portraits. You'll see her website. Um, we do a lot of this stuff ourselves. Like all my book covers, I also design those myself. And build my own website. And she's built her own website. Okay, and you got some supernatural representation as well. Because you're both fans. Alrighty. You just see Jensen and Jared. Now, you use uh, watercolors for this or oil. oil? Okay. Interesting. How long does it usually take you to do paintings? Oh, only a few hours. The text portraits take way longer. Do you do like specific requests? Yeah, I bought that. Um, I have, no one's really requested anything. My sister kind of hinted that she wanted one of her son, <laughs> her son, and so I made it for her for Christmas, but I haven't had any orders in yet. I've just been painting for a year. Just a year? Yes. Have you taken any classes, or you're just, just um, kind of talent, and you're just like, I'm going to roll with that? Uh, yeah, I watched Bob Ross videos. I took some classes in high school, but I sucked at it, but I wanted... I, <laughs> Wow. wow. I wanted to paint, like my entire life I've wanted to paint so bad and it was just like after I watched those Bob Ross videos, it was just like something clicked in my brain. <laughs> it's a true, true story. I was like, man, I know she likes to paint, but I don't know if she got it, but I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? <laughs> well, thank you guys for interviewing with me. And where can people find you? Um, well, people can find Tina at uh, <laughs> tinastextportraits.com and they can find me at ninjadustpublishing.com. All right, well, thank you. Thank you.